I wanted to show you guys another fix for the 6262 dual ball bearing. My name's Austin, in case you're just joining us, I noticed we have a lot of new subscribers and I've been building turbochargers for eight years. Now on to the rebuild. So this is a 6262 Generation 1 and to fix this turbo there's a couple different options and if you watched my last video I showed you one of those options and that was the Gen 2 that I did. The Gen 1 uses the different bearing housing and if you don't know the difference in the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 watch my video explaining the differences. There's a different separate video just for that. The Gen 1 uses a GT37R cage which is the same as the 40R and the 42R. The Gen 1 is going to be the more reliable one and uh, yeah as far as the fix for this uh, what I did for this one was we machined the exhaust housing and did, and did a GT37R turbine to make it basically a 6265 dual ball bearing. We did that because this was originally a 6262 and it may have been a Gen it may have been a Gen 2, I don't really know. This is one that Ian was working on. But we can convert it over to like the Gen 1 style because <clears throat> if you get rid of the bearing housing, you can use this Gen 1 bearing housing. I have plenty of these that I can use. And once you do that, then you could add the P-Trim turbine and the different cage. Actually, yeah, yeah, you can add the P-Trim turbine or the 37R turbine in a different cage. The tur the difference in the turbines in the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 is that the Gen 1 has a better press fit. It's a better press fit between the turbine and the cage. And the Gen or yeah, there's the Gen 1, the for the Gen 1 and the 37R and all that. For the Gen 2, the press fit is really not that tight. So sometimes what can happen is the cage will uh, wear out between the sleeve and the shaft and it's basically not repairable. You could put another journal bearing shaft in there and another cage, but that means you have to spend $400 with precision just to get you another cage that's not even a re reliable cage anyway. So this is the way that we fix this one. It's a much better fix than replacing it with the other cage and replacing the shaft and it's probably going to cost a lot less than doing it the other way and it'll last a lot longer. This one's the Gen 2. So the most common mistake I see with this is the oil feed uh, restrictor pin is removed and somebody is trying to like use the turbo without that. Well this piece will hold the cage in place and if you don't have that then the cage will start to slide this way a lot. So it's, that's like, like I said, it's the most common thing that I see that people make a mistake or they tamper with that somehow and mess it up. So for that turbo, this is, that's a turbo from Venezuela that we're doing a build on and Ian converted that over to the Gen 1 style rather than the Gen 2 where we're using the 37R cage and then a 37R turbine for the press fit into the cage and then we have to machine the exhaust housing for that. So this is just the Gen 2 compressor wheel that is like the newest variation. So maybe it's more like a Gen 3. I'm not really sure if they specified calling it that. So to give you some ideas of different fixes and stuff for this, this plate right here is a 5mm Superbac. It requires that you use the compressor wheel and the plate to match. So this compressor wheel on the 6262s were always 5mm Superbac. So you have to use this plate to match it. But for this one, if I had a 2mm Superbac plate for a TO4E, then I could use this original compressor outling and use this compressor wheel and machine the compressor outling. This is a GTX 35A2R compressor wheel. Since I didn't have that 2mm plate right now, I grabbed a 2mm TO4S plate rather than the TO4E plate because that's the one I need that's kind of hard to get. And then uh, the compressor housing is a housing that we have in the cell. And so I just swapped these two on to build this. And then for the turbine, we use the GT37R turbine and the 37R cage. 
and as well as our bearing housing. So this is just another way to fix it. So if you think about it in these terms, I didn't even use any parts from the Precision Turbo to build this at that point. <laughs> so the only thing I would use from the 6262 to build this is the compressor housing and a new plate that's a two millimeter super back. And if I had those parts, then I could repair your 6262 ball bearing and make it a more reliable ball bearing turbo. We do these repairs as a service and we also uh, sell all the parts. I do have a video on 6262 Gen 1 and Gen 2 rebuild kits. So I'll link to that in the description box so you can find that and make sure that you pick out the correct one that you need. There I'll explain the differences between the two turbos and, and the differences between the two kits. And uh, that should be everything that you need. If you need to contact me, the best way is through email, uh, turbolabamerica at gmail.com, or you can go to our website and find our contact information. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully everything that I mentioned here was helpful to you to be able to fix your turbo. If, if it's too complicated, you can always send it to us so I can do it as a service.